Welcome in to Locked On Phillies. I'm your host, Connor Thomas. Been talking Phillies baseball for years over on 97.5 The Fanatic on the radio. Now happy to be with you here on Locked On Phillies. Got a fun show for you today. The Phillies had a great game yesterday against the Toronto Blue Jays. A lot of action in that one, a lot of offense. We'll recap that. But first, I want to get into Nick Castellanos' introductory press conference as a Philadelphia Philly. We talked about Schwarbers. Now I want to tell you what Castellanos, who has a little bit more personality than your average Major League Baseball player, what he said in his. We'll break down that. And finally, we'll have the latest updates from our March Madness top eight moments of Philadelphia Phillies history. We've got another winner, another team moving on to the final four. Another moment, not really a team. You know what I'm saying. I want to thank you, of course, for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Lots to get into today. Let's get started. You are Locked On Phillies. Your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, folks, so I'm just going to give you a heads up real quick before we get in it today. I did four hours of radio on the morning show this morning. I just got done four hours of TV over on NBC Sports Philadelphia. I'll be doing that tomorrow. I'll be doing that Monday. So apologize if I'm a little bit slow on the trigger today. I'm still going to bring the energy. But I also bring that up to say, hey, no one's out there putting in this much work to bring you this in-depth Phillies content. You're not getting it anywhere better. That's why you come to Locked On Phillies. That's why we've got such a good show for you today. I'm talking to people. I'm hearing things. We're going through stuff. I'm breaking stuff down already. So you're getting full in-depth information. And speaking of breaking down things, we're going to get into the game a little bit. But it's spring training. You know what really matters. You want to talk about those new guys joining the Phillies. We talked about Kyle Schwarber's introductory press conference. Well, yesterday, Nick Castellanos had his first meeting with the Philadelphia Phillies. He's going to be wearing number eight. He put on the red pinstripes for the very first time, and he fielded questions from the Philadelphia Phillies media members. And Castellanos, I don't know if you're familiar with him. If not, a very, very high personality guy. He's a interesting guy. He's not afraid to speak his mind. He plays the game with a lot of passion. He's got a lot of fire. He's a very fiery player. And he's a guy that could very well be a vocal leader in this locker room. And based on his comments, it seems like he's perfectly comfortable in doing so. Some of the best things that came out, the best sound bites that we've been using over on the radio side, I'm sure you've heard if you've been scrolling through Twitter and everything, retweeted a couple of them. From my account at Connor Thomas 975 on Twitter, there's there's some great stuff that came out of this press conference as far as little sound bites. And Castellanos actually a pretty funny guy. So the first thing that really caught my ear when I heard it was he had a sound bite talking about he's played a thousand games at the major league level. He's won a bunch of games, he's hit a bunch of home runs, he's made a bunch of money but he hasn't won any games that matters. Never won a playoff game in his career, and he said he's tired of that. He's ready for that to end. He's motivated to make that end here in Philadelphia. The games don't matter to him. The money doesn't matter to him. The home runs don't matter to him. It doesn't matter unless you make it to October and play meaningful baseball. So he is clearly fed up with his time that he spent in Cincinnati where they didn't compete. And they didn't make it to the playoffs. They didn't get a chance to play what he called games that matter. And uh, all due respect to the Reds organization and uh, my friend Jeff Carr over there, who runs the Locked On MLB channel and is still a host of Locked On Reds. But he's not wrong. They didn't really give him a good opportunity over there to win. It's why he's now in Philadelphia. And it'll be up to the Phillies to rectify that and not let history repeat itself there when it comes to Castellanos' time in the major leagues. And the Phillies are a team that's poised and ready to do it. He also talked about his qualifications for being part of a team that does make the playoffs and gets him to games where he can play what he calls meaningful baseball, and what we should all call meaningful baseball. October is the goal, and late into October, if we're being completely honest. But another thing he said that got a chuckle out of the Philadelphia media was he said this is what he does. This is how he provides for his family. This is his only option. He doesn't have a college degree. He literally said, I don't have a college degree. My job is to hit baseballs. 
It's what he does. He wakes up in the morning. He eats breakfast. He goes out. He mashes. He goes. He eats lunch. He goes back out. He mashes some more. It's literally all he does. It's what he was born to do. It's what he was put on this planet to do. It's what he majors in. It's what his profession is. Like literally, it's what he said. He doesn't have a college degree. He didn't study economics or business or political science or music or the arts, anything like that. No, this man studied baseball. He's pretty damn good at what he does. It's why he just got a $100 million contract to come do it for the Philadelphia Phillies. And he is well aware of how he puts food on the table for his family. It's by a sweet swing he's got and hitting the ball out of the ballpark. So he's very aware. And I just love the uh, the bluntness of, no, I'm not trying to be anything else. I'm not trying to be this philosophical guy. I'm not trying to convince you I'm anything. I am what you see on the field. I'm a guy that goes out and hits baseballs. Love that about him. And another little back and forth that he had. He had his first little testy. It wasn't really like testy, but he was more feeling out the waters of the Philadelphia media, which I'm sure he's aware is a little bit of a difficult place sometimes when things aren't going your way. Very, very demanding fan base and media group here in Philadelphia. That's no secret to you being a fan of the Phillies. But sometimes these free agents come in here and they're not sure exactly how tough the media is going to be. So they like to try stuff out. He was going back and forth. I believe it was Todd Zalecki asked the question and was asking, saying basically, you play with a, a lot of passion and you seem to be a passionate player. Do you like consider yourself as someone who plays with a lot of like fire or passion? And he immediately responds, Cassianos, this is, do you think I'm a guy that plays with a lot of passion? Throwing the question back on him. And uh, Mr. Zalecki responds and says, yeah, you do seem like you play with passion. You play with fire. And he says in response, and that's Cassianos. Yeah, I, that's not for me to determine. I'll leave that up to you guys to determine how you want to call it. I go out there and I play hard for the team. I play with a lot of, uh, you could call it emotional. Uh, you could call me an emotional player. But my big thing is I go out there and I try my hardest to win was basically the sentiment behind it. So it wasn't really testy, but just a little back and forth, and throwing stuff back at the media, seeing how they handled it. And he reiterated, I'm a serious guy. I'm here about, even though he was funny and he has the, that charisma and he has that passion for the game he's a very like vocal and passionate guy you can tell and i would characterize uh, characterize him rather as an emotional player a guy that you see he'll bat flip he'll chirp the opposing team he has a little bit of an edge to him which i love but he, he went ahead and said to the phillies media yeah I, i'm here this is business and that was kind of the sentiment of the whole thing the one other funny clip that came out of the uh, press conference that's worth mentioning, I think, is a little something that his agent, Scott Boris, said. And, of course, you should be familiar with Scott Boris, the biggest MLB agent, I'd say. And he represents some huge clients, one you may have heard of, uh, Bryce Harper. Yeah, so Scott Boris, typically, when he has these clients who sign big deals, he'll be at their introductory press conference just to give a little bit of information. It'll be the owner of the team, the player, and well, or sorry, not the owner, really, the GM or president of baseball operations of the team, the player, and then Scott Boris as the agent. And Scott Boris was asked about the deal and everything and how Castellanos will fit into the city. And the first thing he said is he's glad he got the deal done so that he doesn't have Bryce Harper calling him four times a day telling him to get Castellanos to Philadelphia. So that just shows you Bryce Harper was on Scott Boris. And I don't know how much effect it really had on the proceedings. Of course, it's up to Castellanos. It's up to Scott Boris as his agent to find him the best deal. It's up to Dave Dombrowski as the president of baseball operations for the Philadelphia Phillies to make the deal happen. But to see and hear that your superstar has this much passion to bring in other great players that he's calling his own agent, not to get himself a deal, but to get one of the other clients to come to Philadelphia to play with him and to make this a playoff caliber baseball team. That's a beautiful thing to hear. And then, of course, Boris went on with all of the eye wash, or I guess it's ear wash in this case, because he was talking about, oh, he's got great passion and he fits in with the city well and he'll hit anywhere in the lineup and this, that, and the other thing. And he plays yeah, all the passion, like we've talked about it multiple times already. But that's the stuff you've got to say when your client is joining a new team in a new city. That that was typical. But I thought it was funny that he brought up Bryce Harper's involvement in the whole thing, how much it really affected it. And who knows? Probably marginally, if at all. But what it shows you is how 
serious Bryce Harper is about this team adding new pieces to become more competitive. And the other comments show you just how serious Nick Castellanos is about finally being in a place with an organization that is ready to win. Maybe not the World Series, maybe not the division even, but they're ready to go compete for the playoffs. And Nick Castellanos, Bryce Harper, and company fully, fully expect that to be a possibility and hopefully end up being a reality when the end of the 2022 season is upon us. So when we get to October, maybe even early November, depending on how the series shake out. Now, Cassianos has not played yet for the Phillies. He'll get some action in the spring, hopefully coming up soon. It could be in their next game. We'll see when he actually gets out on the field and gets his first action. We get to see that swing. We get to see him play a little bit of defense, hopefully, unless he DHs. But the other newest Philly, Kyle Schwarber, did get some action yesterday in a matchup with the Blue Jays. We'll tell you about what his first action in Philly's red looked like. Well, red and white down there in spring training with the special spring training uniforms. We'll talk you through all that and some other interesting takeaways from the game that happened as the Phillies took down the Blue Jays yesterday. So the breakdown of that coming up in just a second. First, though. I want to tell you about Bet Online. So it's that time of year again as college basketball's tournament is finally upon us. The Sweet 16 tipping off tonight. So all the latest odds, contests, and player props you need, you got to go to betonline.net to find it. They're your number one source for all your sports betting info and needs. Bet Online remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season as well. It's not just the odds, you can get everything sports centric from Bet Online, and it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information needs. The last episode, we talked about some Phillies uh, odds to make the playoffs. Ran through that from our friends over at Bet Online. They've got everything, including live betting and even your favorite Vegas casino games. I'm a little bit of, I've got a little bit of a gambling vice, so that I always perk up when I read that over and over. So I want you to head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action because Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, let's get into that game from yesterday. The Philadelphia Phillies taking down the Toronto Blue Jays down there in Clearwater, Florida, beating them by a score of 8-7. to seven. The wind was blowing out like crazy. And it led to a high-scoring afternoon for both of these teams. I was watching a little bit. I was on location at a Hooters here in, like, the King of Prussia area for our uh, Mike Missinelli show for the TV show that we do on NBC Sports Philadelphia. So that was fun. And I was taking a glimpse, and then I went and back, and I watched some of the highlights. But let's run through the box score and take a look. First off, Kyle Schwarber, three at-bats in his opening time, started off leading off and playing the DH role for the Phillies. So no fielding for Kyle Schwarber, but DH and leadoff. This lineup, real quick, before we go down what everybody did, this lineup is very, very close to what I predicted it was going to be. So go ahead and check the tapes. I'm pretty close. And I think with Nick Castellanos joining it, it may be I hit the nail right on the head. Maybe I do know a little something about baseball. Schwarber led off. Gene Segura bat batted second. Bryce Harper batted third. J.T. Romuto in the cleanup. Now, what I think is going to change is I think this Nick Castellanos fits better in the cleanup role behind Bryce. J.T. shifts up to two to take Segura's spot, and then everybody else slots down. But Reese Hoskins went ahead and batted fifth. Didi Gregorius batted sixth. Alec Bohm seventh. Matt Veerling eighth. Adam Hazley ninth. Now, Adam Hazley would slide out of the lineup when Nick Castellanos takes over left. Veerling would go to center, and then those guys would just shift down into basically the exact lineup I told you that they were going to go with. I don't know if that's the case. Of course, this game was played <laughs> with a way 16 days to opening day when that was played. 15 now, I believe, if my math is correct, which it rarely is. But it looks like the lineup was taking shape for the first time yesterday with a majority of starters playing. So back to Schwerber. Three at bats, he had two Ks. Not great. Went over. But that's okay. It's his first time seeing live pitching in months. So. It's going to take a little bit of time for him to work back in and get settled in, get that timing down, especially guys that hit the long ball, those guys that drive the baseball, the power hitters. They take a little bit of longer time because naturally they strike out more. 
So they got to get their timing down more. It's, it's going to be fine. It's not anything to worry about. He got to swing violently at a couple of times. His first exit velocity, I think, was like 114 miles an hour was on the first uh, contact that he had. Unfortunately, it didn't result in a hit or anything for him on the afternoon. But you saw a little bit of that patented strength from Kyle Schwarber. Gene Segura had two RBIs. Nice little uh, two RBI hit from Gene at a point in the game. Uh, Bryce went one for two. Uh, JT Ramuto had a strong day. Two hits, two RBIs, so he went two for three. And he also, so one of those was a homer, third inning. Uh, so he went ahead and got that going in the third. So that's nice seeing him leave the ballpark. It was windy. There was a bit of a wind tunnel blowing out that caught JT's home run and carried it out. But still, a good day for him. Reese Hoskins looked good. He went two for three on the day. So that's perfect for him. If he can do that out of the five or the six hole, wherever he ends up batting, that's an added plus. Didi went two for two, batted a thousand on the day. Nice little RBI for him. If Didi can have a bounce back, that's good. And what you're seeing, it's just one spring training game. But some of these guys that struggled at points last year or struggled throughout the year for the Phillies, moving down to the bottom of the lineup now, getting a little bit less pressure and being a little bit more comfortable with where they're at. Now, Alec Bohm went over. He hasn't played great defense. The good news is, let me double check, I don't think he had any errors. No, no errors. So that's a step in the right direction for uh, for Mr. Bohm. But he's hit an 091 for the spring. So he's still trying to settle in. I got to imagine he's working on some stuff, working on the swing, jumping back into it. I'm not worried until he struggles for a week or two when the regular season starts. And then Matt Veerling, Matty V., he went, what, two for two, two RBIs, one run scored himself, didn't strike out, batted a thousand. Like, that's just, he had a great day. And it's spring training, but for a young player, this is where the building of that confidence starts. I, that's all you really have to do as a young player. Got to believe you can do it. This guy's hit at basically every level he's been at. The main difference, like the stuff's nastier, but he's seen guys during his time in the minors that have ended up as major league pitchers, no doubt. All he's got to do is believe he can hit at this level, and if he's going to be in the eight or nine hole, he could be a really, really nice piece. And I actually talked about how good he could be with Lindsey Crosby in a crossover, and I want to tell you about Locked On MLB Prospects. Thank you again for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. I also want you to check out the Locked On MLB Prospects with Lindsey Crosby. Lock on Prospect's amazing. Lindsey is an encyclopedia of the younger players in the league, the prospects in the minors, draftable players, both in high school and college. He knows it all. He's going deep, deep into the minor league bowels of the systems to find guys you've never even heard of and tell you why they're going to be the next stars of tomorrow. So make sure you go ahead and check out Locked on MLB Prospects. And you can go back and check out our crossover where we talked about Matt Beerling and what he could bring. Solid day for the young player yesterday against Toronto. So we'll see what that does and a little something interesting. This is news that's uh, recently came out today, so after the game. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at one specific player real quick. We didn't do much in this game, but Johan Camargo coming over from Atlanta. He's having a pretty solid spring. Alec Bohm not having a great spring. And Johan Camargo, typically a third baseman by trade. He went 0 for in the game. He was 0 for 1 in relief. Uh, he jumped into Reese Hoskins' spot in the lineup. He played a little bit of third base as well. But he's been playing well enough that there are now rumors surfacing that Johan Camargo could possibly steal time from Alec Bohm at third base, even taking over that position prior to opening day. Is that crazy that Alec Bohm could not be in the lineup on opening day? No, it doesn't seem like it is. And uh, Bohm's going to have to, even though it's spring training, and I've told you, PSA, it doesn't matter. Guys are working on stuff. Well, you better work on it quick because Camargo is looking really good and he could easily slide in and take some time away from Alec Bohm when the season actually starts. But that's a look back at what happened yesterday. We'll have another re uh, game to recap as the Phillies took on the Pirates. Today, we'll recap that on tomorrow's episode and tell you about what happened in that game, break everything down. I love that we're getting to talk about live baseball and get everything going down there in spring training. It's exciting, especially with a lot of the starters now being in the lineup down there in Clearwater and the other areas around the Grapefruit League. It's just, it's the our first whiff. Oh, yeah. Can smell that? Baseball in the air. It's not regular season baseball yet. 
uh, but it's still so much fun to talk about. Now, we'll talk about on the other side a little bit of hypothetical baseball. We'll go through our most recent matchup in the top eight moments in Philadelphia Phillies history, break that down, and tell you who won our most recent matchup in the first field, the round of eight, trying to get to the final four. All right, so first things first, hand up. This is on me. You know, I told you I've been working crazy hours today. Well, I've been doing that for a couple days this week. It's going to continue. A lot of stuff going on with the station and TV stuff. That's all. That's cool. It's all good things. It's giving me better content to bring to you guys here on Locked on Philly. So it's a benefit. But what it means is uh, I may slip on a thing or two here. And I accidentally, instead of setting our latest matchup in the, the top eight moments of Philadelphia Phillies history bracket for six hours, so I'd have it ready for today's episode. Uh, I might have set it for six days. So we'll we'll find out in a week who really wins. But this is like, you know, when you're watching the election coverage, uh, when they're running like the, the presidential elections, they're like, OK, all the votes are reporting, but we're ready to call this state in favor of whoever. Well, I'm ready to call this one in favor of a certain team. This matchup, again, it's winning the World Series in 2008, which is a lot of people who are this generation and you, who I'm talking to, this very well could have been your main team that got you into Philadelphia Phillies baseball, your childhood team, the Jimmy Rollins, Ryan Howard, Chase Utley team, and what they did in 2008 with Cole Hamels being awesome, with Brad Lidge being perfect, with what that team was. We know, like the back of our hand, how good that 08 team was. It was winning the World Series in 08 versus Jimmy Rollins' walk-off double versus the Dodgers in the 09 NLCS to get them all set up to go back to their second World Series in as many years. It wasn't a walk-off to send them to the World Series. That would have been incredible, but it did put them in the driver's seat in that series to take advantage and eventually go on to the World Series, which, unfortunately, they'd lose in 9 to the Yankees, and you know the rest between there and here. Well, unfortunately for J-Roll, who is a great player, an amazing part of Philadelphia Phillies history, for my money, should be a Hall of Famer at the shortstop position. Well, he's not a Hall of Famer in this bracket. <laughs> A hundred percent of the vote is on the 08 World Series. Not a single vote so far for Jimmy Rollins. It doesn't look like Jimmy's got a chance in this one. So I'm going to go ahead and rather than wait the six days and delay all of this, which would be silly, I'm going to go ahead and just move the 08 World Series on to the next round. So they're the two seed. They rightfully advance and they're moving on to the final four. So both of the World Series, the 1980 World Series won last uh, the last matchup. And now the 08 World Series team, they've won this matchup. So both of them on to the final four. Now it's time to introduce our next matchup. So it's our third of four matchups in the first round. And this one is a three versus six. So we're getting closer. This may be our first upset because the World Series are out of it. They were basically locks. A little bit unfair, but what are you going to do? This one is two great moments from some, I don't want to call them completely role players or anything, but they weren't like the total number one stars of the team, but it led, they, were, they played parts leading to World Series runs. Manny Trio's famous triple with the whole Nolan Ryan backstory to it in 1980 for that team on their way to winning the World Series in 80. That's our three seed, the Manny Trio triple. Just an incredible Incredible moment, a clutch hit from a clutch player when they needed it back in 80, and probably the seminal moment outside of actually winning the World Series for that run back there in 80. I wasn't around to watch it, but I've seen it so many times looking back on the old games and everything like that. So a huge moment for Manny Trio and the Phillies during that postseason. That goes up against our sixth seed, Shane Victorino's Grand Slam off of CC Sabathia in 2008 in the NLDS. Now you remember. NLDS, their path went for the Phillies, Brewers, Dodgers, Tampa Bay Rays. Well, I guess they were the Devil Rays at the time. They hadn't switched over yet to being the actual Tampa Bay Rays that we know in today's Major League Baseball. But I digress. In that first series against the Brewers, like we didn't know how good – we knew this Phillies team was good. We knew they had a shot. But they still needed to prove some postseason success because this generation of Phillies talent had not really done it yet. So they go out and they're facing the workhorse, CC Sabathia, one of the best pitchers in Major League Baseball that year. And he was the guy that you absolutely had to get through if you're going to go through the Milwaukee Brewers in the year 2008. Well, Shane Victorino gets an opportunity early with the bases loaded, 
parks one in the seats of Citizens Bank Park, a grand slam from Shane Victorino. I've had plenty of people tell me over the years that's as loud as they've ever heard that stadium in any moment in their lives. I mean, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I imagine you've probably seen it, but if not, and if you have, always worth going back and looking at those two moments, but both huge moments on runs to winning a World Series. So Manny Trio's triple in 1980, Shane Victorino's Grand Slam in 2008. Those are the next ones. I'll put that up in a Twitter poll at LO underscore Phillies. I'll retweet it from my personal Twitter account at Connor Thomas 975 You can find those on Twitter. Put your votes in. I won't put it up for six days this time, I promise. So we won't make that mistake again. And we'll have the third of our four final four teams once that one's all set up. So we'll be able to go through all that on tomorrow's episode. So we go into the weekend, going three of the four final four teams. We'll have a poll. And then on Monday, I'll be able to run through the final four for you. So that's what we've got as far as the bracket's concerned. That's taken off nicely. No upsets yet, but I think Shane Victorino has a chance to upset Manny Trio in this one. Ultimately, it's up to you, the fan, to decide how that one goes. So I'm very excited to see the results on that one. That's all I've got for you for today's show. On tomorrow's episode, we'll recap the Phillies game with the Pirates that went on today. So another game recap. We'll talk through. It's Friday. Wow, it's Friday already? First five-episode week down. Well, not quite. I still got to record tomorrow's, but we're going to count it. We're basically there. We'll have the closer with the the off-the-pole segment, and I'll have a little bit of something that I want to get into as far as some content going into next week. I don't want to give too much away because you got to go check out tomorrow's episode. I'm not letting you off the hook like that, but that's all we've got for today. Real quick, I want to thank you again for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. Now I want you to make your second listen, Locked On MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully. He brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Definitely go check out Sully's work. He's got some awesome stuff to bide you over until I get back with you tomorrow and we talk a little bit about the latest Phillies news from spring training, getting ready for the season, and everything that's going on down there in Clearwater. Thanks for your time. Again, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Rate, review, five stars, everything you can do. We're getting closer. uh, So many subscribers. I'm seeing new guys every day. New guys and gals check in. So appreciate you if you have subscribed. If you haven't, go subscribe. If you have subscribed, create a new account. Subscribe from that one. Uh, I mean, I want to do it fairly, but hey, all the help counts. And rate and review on podcasts wherever you consume those. I really appreciate it. The better we do, the better content that you guys can get from me here at Locked On Phillies. I almost said the radio thing. My brain's fried. That's all I got. I'm going to hang it up for the night. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And I will speak to you tomorrow.